Hmm, you want to know about recombinant DNA technology? I'm happy to tell you about it. It's simple. You can think of this way. There is a beautiful and rich girl who wanted her own baby. She don't want to get married, either she don't want to get bearded child. Plus, she wanted her baby to have blue color eyes. So, she need to find blue eye collagen from the sperm bank and fuse it with her ovum in vitro. And then, she find another woman to carry her child for 9 months. Which is the surrogate mother. After 9 months, the baby with blue color eye was born. So now, let's replace with insulin, which is a protein. The baby is the insulin, the sperm is the target DNA, and the ovum is the vector. And the surrogate mother is the host. So in recombinant, first we need to isolate the target genes, like the genes that codes for insulin, and need to isolate the suitable vector too. Second, cut both target DNA and vector with the same restriction site. After that, mix the open vector and the fragment of the target DNA. And you add a ligase to join them by forming phosphodiester that point. That step is known as insertion. Next is transformation. You find a capable host and introduce the recombinant DNA into the host. The ACL2 and heat shot make it more efficient. Next part is screening. We need to find the screen the host to find out the one that with origin. In this model, we manipulate the genetic marker that vector has. Since plasmid vector has AMPR gene, let's grow our host medium containing and vicinity. This way, the host without any vector will not survive, hence eliminated. And since we cut vector LZ gene and insert our target gene in there, we can conclude that LZ gene will not function anymore. Instead of hydrolyzing x it will produce insulin instead. So let's consider our host in x medium as well. The host that hydrolyze x will appear blue. While the one that does not hydrolyze x will appear white. Which one will be for the culture? Hmm. Yeah, it's the white one! Yay! Because the leg side of the vector is non-functioning, it means express another gene instead which is our target gene. So that the host that carries our RDNA are not able to produce the enzyme and can, so it cannot hydrolyze the x cow. That's it from me! Hi guys, my name is Azwa. Hi, my name is Afrina. Hi guys, my name is Nisa. Hi, Assalamualaikum, my name is Nona Bila. Hi guys, my name is Mimi Asinda. Hello guys. Do you want to know about recombinant DNA technology? I'd be happy to tell you about it. It's simple. You can think of it this way. There is this beautiful and rich girl who wanted her own baby, but she don't want to get married and she don't want to get bear child. And she wants her baby to have blue color eyes. So, what she could do is she find blue eyes color gene from the sperm bag and fuse it with her ovum in vitro. And then, she find another woman to carry her child for 9 months. A surrogate mother. After 9 months, the baby with blue colored eyes was born. Let replace the girl with you and you want insulin a protein. The baby is the insulin. The sperm is the target DNA. The ovum is the vector. And the surrogate mother is the host. So, in the recombinant DNA, first, isolate the target gene like the gene you code for. 
and you need to isolate this suitable vector too. Secondly, you can both target in A and vector with the same restriction site. After that, you mix the open vector and the fragment of the target DNA and you add ligase to join them by forming phosphor diester bond. The step is known as insertion. Next is transformation. You can find a capable host and induce the recombinant DNA into the host. Calcium chloride and heat shock make it more efficient. Next part is screening. You screen the host to find out the one with target gene. In this process, we manipulate the genetic marker that the vector has. Since plasmic has vector ampicillin resistant gene, let's grow our host medium containing ampicillin. This way, the host with the any vector will not survive, hence eliminated. And since we call vectors like Z gene and inserted our target gene in there. So, we can conclude that the lexer gene will not function anymore. Instead of hydrolysis as gel, will produce the insulin. So, let's culture our host in x gal medium as well. The host that hydrolyzes x gal will appear as blue, and the one that does not hydrolyze x gal will appear as white. Which one will we further culture? Yes, it's the white one. Because the leg sac of the vector is not functioning. It means it's a process on the gene instead, which is our target gene. So, that the host that carry our RDNA. That's all from us. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 about recombinant DNA technology, I'd be happy to tell you about it. You can take off it this way. There is this beautiful and rich girl who wanted her own baby. But she don't want to get married and don't want to get bear the child. And she wanted her baby to have blue color eye. So what she could do is she find blue eye color gene from the sperm bank and fuse it with her ovum in vitro. And then she find another woman to carry her child for nine months. A surrogate mother. After nine months, the baby with blue color eye was born. Let's replace the girl with you and you want insulin, the protein. The baby is the insulin, the sperm is the tiger DNA, the ovum is the vector, and the surrogate mother is the host. So, in a recombinant DNA, you first isolate the target gene that codes for insulin, and you need to isolate the suitable vector too. Secondly, you cut both target DNA and vector the same restriction site. After that, you mix the open vector and the fragment of target DNA, and you add ligase to join them by forming phosphodiester bond. That step is known as insertion. Next is transformation. You find a capable host and introduce the recombinant DNA into the host case too and heat shock make it more efficient. Next part is screening. You screen the host to find out the one with target gene. In this process, we manipulate the genetic marker the vector has. Since plasmid S vector has AMPR gene, let's grow our host medium containing ampicillin. This way, the host without any vector will not survive, hence eliminated. And since we cut vectors like C gene and inserted our target gene in there, we can conclude that Lex C gene will not function anymore. Instead of hydrolyzing X scale, it will produce insulin instead. So, let's culture our host in X scale medium as well. The host that hydrolyzes x gal will appear blue. The one that does not hydrolyze x gal will appear white. Which one will we further culture? Yes, it's the white one. 
because the leg C of the vector is non-functioning. It means it expresses another chain instead, which is our target chain. So, that's the host that carries our RDNA. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and happy learning! Hmm, you want to know about recombinant DNA technology? I'll be happy to tell you about it. It's simple, you can think of it this way. There is this beautiful and rich girl who wanted her own baby. But she don't want to get married and she don't want to get bear the child. And she wants the baby to have blue colored eye. So what she could do is she find blue eye collagen from the sperm bank and fuse it with her ovum in vitro and then she find another woman to carry her child for 9 months a surrogate mother after 9 months the baby with blue color eyes was born let's replace the girl with you and you wanted insulin a protein the baby is the insulin the sperm is the target DNA the ovum is the vector and the surrogate's mother is the host. So in recombinant DNA, you first isolate the target gene, like gene that codes for insulin, and you need to isolate the suitable vector too. Secondly, you cut both target DNA and vector with the same restriction site. After that, you mix the open vector and the fragment of target DNA. And you add ligates to join them by forming phosphodiester bond. That step is known as insertion. Next is transformation. You find a capable host and introduce the recombinant DNA into the host. Sim chloride and heat shock make it more efficient. Next part is screening. You screen the host to find out the one with target gene. In this process, we manipulate the genetic marker that the vector has. Since plasmid as vector has MP gene, let's grow our host medium containing ampicillin. This way, the host without any vector will not survive, hence eliminated. And since we cut vectors, let Z gene and inserted our target gene in there, we can conclude that the let Z gene will not function anymore. Instead of hydrolyzing its gall, it will produce insulin instead. So let's culture our host in its gall medium as well. The host that hydrolyzes its gall will appear blue. The one that does not hydrolyze its gall will appear white. Which one will further culture? Yes, it's the white one. Because the leg -like of the vector is non-functioning, it means it expresses another gene instead, which is our target gene. So, that's the host that carries our RDNA. Woohoo! Hmm, you want to know about recombinant DNA technology? I'd be happy to tell you about it. It's simple. You can think of it this way. There is this beautiful and rich girl who wanted her own baby. But she don't want to get married and she don't want to bear the child. And she wanted her baby to have blue color eye. So what she could do is she find blue eye color gene from the sperm bank and fuse it with her ovum in vitro. And then she find another woman to carry her child for 9 months, which is called a surrogate mother. After 9 months, the baby with blue color eye was born. Let's replace the girl with you and you want insulin, a protein. The baby is the insulin. The sperm is the target DNA. The young one is the vector. And the surrogate mother is the host. So in recombinant DNA, you first isolate the target gene, like the gene that codes for insulin. And you need to isolate the suitable vector too. Secondly, you cut both target DNA and vector with the same restriction site. After that, you mix the open vector and the fragment of target DNA. And you add ligase to join them by forming phosphodiester bond. 
that step is known as insertion. Next is transformation. You find the capable host and introduce the recombinant DNA into the host. CSL2 and heat shock make it more efficient. Next part is screening. You screen the host to find out the one with target gene. In this process, we manipulate the genetic marker that the vector has. Since plasmid as vector has gene, let's grow our host medium containing ampicillin. This way, the host without any vector will not survive, hence eliminated. And since we cut vectors like Z gene and inserted our target gene in there, we can conclude that the lead Z gene will not function anymore. Instead of hydrolyzing at scale, it will produce insulin instead. So let's culture our host in at scale medium as well. The host that hydrolyzes at scale will appear blue. The one that does not hydrolyze at scale will appear white. Which one will we further culture? Can you think of it? Hmm. Yes, it's the white wine. Because the last day of the vector is non-functioning, it means it expresses another gene instead, which is our target gene. So that's the host that carries our RDNA. So basically, there are five tools used in gene cloning, which is target DNA, restriction enzyme, DNA cloning vector, modifying enzyme, and last but not least, host cell. So I think that's all everyone. I hope you can memorize all these keywords and excel in your PSPM. Okay, so goodbye everyone and have a good revision. Um, you want to know about recombinant DNA technology? I'm happy to tell you about it. It's simple. You can think of it this way. There is this beautiful and rich girl who wanted her own baby. But she don't want to get married and she don't want to get bear the child. And she wanted her baby to have blue color eye. So what she could do is find blue color eye gene from the sperm bank and fuse it with her ovum in vitro. And then she find another woman to carry her child for 9 months. A surrogate mother. After 9 months, the baby with blue color eyes was born. That's replace the girl with you and you want the insulin the protein the baby is the insulin the sperm is the target dna the ovum is the vector and the surrogate mother is the host so in recombinant dna you first isolate the target gene like the gene that codes for insulin and you need to isolate this tubal vector too Secondly, you cut both target DNA and vector with the same restriction site. After that, you mix the open vector and the fragment of target DNA. And you add ligase to join them by forming phosphodiester the bond. That step is known as insertion. Next is transformation. You find a, co a capable host and introduce the recombinant DNA into the host. Calcium chloride and heat shock make it more efficient. Next part is screening. You screen the host to find out the one with target gene. In this process, you manipulate the genetic marker that the vector has isolated. Since plasmid as vector has gene, let's grow our host medium containing ampicillin. This way, the host without any vector will not survive, hence eliminated. And since we cut the vector like Z like gene and insert our target gene in there, we can conclude that the like Z gene will not function anymore. Instead of hydrolyzing x it will produce insulin instead. So let's culture our host in x medium as well. The host that hydrolyzes x will appear blue. And the one that does not hydrolyze x will appear white. Which one will be for the culture? Yes, it's the white one. Because the leg Z of the vector is non-functioning, it means it expresses another gene instead. 
which is our target gene. So that's the host that carries our RDNA. Mm, thank you for watching. Bye. Assalamualaikum. You want to know about recombinant DNA technology? I'd be happy to tell you about it. It's simple. You can think of it this way. There is this beautiful and rich girl who wants her own baby, but she don't want to get married and she don't want to get bear the child. And she wants her baby to have blue colored eyes. So what she could do is she find blue eye color gene from the sperm bag and fuse it with her ovum in vitro. And then she find another woman to carry her child for 9 months. The surrogate mother. After 9 months, the baby with blue colored eyes was born. Let's replace the girl with you and you want insulin a protein. The baby is the insulin. And the sperm is the target DNA. The ovum is the vector. And the surrogate mother is the host. So in recombinant DNA, you first isolate the target gene, like the gene that codes for insulin. And you need to isolate the suitable vector too. Secondly, you cut both target DNA and vector with the same restriction site. After that, you mix the upper vector and the fragment of the target DNA. And you add ligase to join them by forming phosphodiester bond. That step is known as insertion. Next is transformation. You find a capable host and introduce the recombinant DNA into the host. Calcium chloride and heat shock make it more efficient. Next part is screening. You screen the host to find out the one with target gene. In this process, we manipulate the genetic marker that the vector has. Since plasmid as vector has MR gene, let's grow our host medium containing MPC. This way, the host without any vector will not survive, hence eliminated it. And since we cut vectors like Z gene and insert our target gene in there, we can conclude that the Z gene will not function anymore. Instead of hydrolyzing its gall, it will produce insulin instead. So let's culture our host in x medium as well. The host that hydrolyzes x will appear blue. The one that does not hydrolyze x will appear white. This one will be further culture. Yes, it's the white one. Because the leg zag of the vector is non-functioning, it means it expresses another gene instead, which is our target gene. So that's the host that carries our RDNA. Mm -hmm. You want to know about recombinant DNA technology? I'd be happy to tell you about it. It's simple. You can think of it this way. There is this beautiful and rich girl who wanted her own baby but she don't want to get married and she don't want to bear the child and she wanted her baby to have blue colored eyes so what she could do is she find blue eye color gene from the sperm bank and fuse it with her ovum in vitro and then she find another woman to carry her child for 9 months uh, which is a surrogate mother after 9 months, the baby with blue colored eyes was born. Let's replace the girl with you and you want an insulin, a protein. The baby is the insulin. And the sperm is the target DNA. The ovum is the vector. And the surrogate mother is the host. So, in recombinant DNA, you first isolate the target gene, like the gene that codes for insulin. And you need to isolate the suitable vector too. Secondly, you cut both target DNA and vector with the same restriction site. After that, you mix the open vector and the fragment of target DNA. And you, you add ligase to join them by forming phosphodiester bond. That step is known as insertion. Next is transformation. 
you find a capable host and introduce the recombinant DNA into the host. Calcium chloride and heat shock make it more efficient. Next part is screening. You need to screen the host to find out the one with the target gene. In this process, we manipulate the genetic mar marker that the vector has. Since plasmid as a vector has AMPR gene, let's grow our host medium containing ampicillin. This way, the host without any vector will, will not survive, hence elimination. And since we cut vectors like Zach gene and inserted our target gene in there, we can conclude that the leg -zac gene will not function anymore. Instead of hydrolyzing x it will produce insulin instead. So let's culture a host in x medium as well. The host that, will, that hydrolyzes x will appear blue. The one that does not hydrolyze x will appear white. Which one will we further culture? Yes, it's the white one. Because the lag zag of the vector is non-functioning, it means it expresses another gene instead, which is our target gene. So that's the host that carries our RDNA. Okay, that's it. I hope this video is helpful. Think outside the box and come up with a more creative way for you to get a better understanding of this topic and read about this topic repeatedly for you to memorize and remember. Okay, thanks. Hmm, you want to know about recombinant DNA technology? I'd be happy to tell you about it. It's simple. You can think of it this way. There is this beautiful and rich girl who wants her own baby. But she didn't want to get married and she don't want to get bad a child. And she want her baby to have blue colored eye. So what she could do is she find blue eye collagen from the sperm bank and fuse it with her ovum in vitro. And then she find another woman to carry her child for 9 months. A surrogate mother! After 9 months, the baby with blue colored eyes was born. Let's replace the girl with you and you want insulin, a protein. The baby is the insulin. The sperm is the target DNA. The ovum is the vector. And the surrogate mother is the host. So, in recombinant DNA, you first isolate the target gene, like the gene that codes for insulin, and you need to isolate the suitable vector too. Secondly, you cut both target DNA and vector with the same restriction site. After that, you mix the open vector and the fragment of target DNA and you add ligase to join them by forming phosphodiester bond. That step is known as insertion. Next is transformation. You find a capable host and introduce the recombinant DNA into the host. CaCl2 and heat shock make it more efficient. Next part is screening. You screen the host to find out the one with target gene. In this process, we manipulate the genetic marker that the factor has. Since plasmid as factor has MP gene, let's grow our host medium containing MP ceiling. This way, the host with any vector will not survive, hence eliminate and since we cut vectors like Z gene and insert our target gene in there, we can conclude that the leg Z gene will not function anymore. Instead of hydrolyzing x gel, it will produce insulin instead, so let's culture our host in x gel medium as well. The host that hydrolyzes x gel will appear blue. The one that does not hydrolyze x gel will appear white. Which one will we further culture? Yes! It's the white one! Because the lexi of the vector is then functioning, it means it expresses another gene instead, which is our target gene! So that's the host that carries our RDNA. Thank you. Hmm, you want to know about recombinant DNA technology? 
I'll be happy to tell you about it. It is simple. You can think of it of this way. There is this beautiful rich girl who wanted her own baby. But she don't want to get married and she don't want to get bear the child. And she wanted her baby to have blue colored eyes. So what she could do is find blue colored eye gene from the sperm bank and fuse it in her ovum in vitro. And then she find another woman to carry her child for 9 months. A surrogate mother. After 9 months, the baby with blue colored eyes was born. Let's replace the girl with you and you wanted an insulin, a protein. The baby is the insulin. The sperm is the target then egg and the ovum is the vector. And the surrogate mother is the host. So, in combination DNA, you first isolate the target gene, like the gene that codes for insulin, and you need to isolate the suitable vector too. Secondly, you cut both target DNA and vector with the same restriction site. After that, you mix the open vector and fragment of target DNA, and you add ligase to join them by forming phosphodiester bond. That step is known as insertion. Next is transformation. You find a capable host and introduce the recombinant DNA into the host. CaCl2 and heat shock made it more efficient. Next part is screening. You screen the host to find out the one with target gene. In this process, we manipulate the genetic marker that the vector has. Since plasmid as vector has MR gene, let's grow our host medium containing epicillin. This way, the host without any vector will not survive, hence eliminated. And since we cut vectors like Z gene and inserted our target gene in there, we can conclude that the leg Z gene will not function anymore. Instead of hydrolyzing x gal it will produce insulin instead. So, let's culture our own host in x gal medium as well. The host that hydrolyzes x gal will appear blue. The one that does not hydrolyze x gal will appear white. Which one will be for the culture? Yes, it's the white one! Because the leg z of the vector is non-functioning, it means it expresses another gene instead, which is our target gene. So that's the host that carries our RNA. In conclusion, gene cloning or the production of multiple copies of a single gene has 5 steps in it. The first step is isolation of the gene. The second step is cleave cut DNA donor and plasmid DNA with restriction enzyme. Step 3 is insertion of DNA fragments into plasmid DNA to form recombinant. Step 4 transformation of recombinant DNA into bacteria host cell. And step 5 is screening to obtain desired clone cell containing the clone gene. That's all from me today. Thank you. Hmm, you want to know about recombinant DNA technology? I'd be happy to tell you about it. It's simple. You can think of it this way. There is this beautiful and rich girl who wanted her own baby. But she don't want to get married and she don't want to bear the child. And she wanted her baby to have blue colored eye. So what she could do is she find blue eye collagen from the sperm bank and fuse it with the ovum in vitro. And then she find another woman to carry her child for nine months. A surrogate mother. After nine months, the baby with blue colored eye was born. Now let's replace the girl with you and you want the insulin, a protein. The baby is the insulin. The sperm is the target DNA. The ovum is the vector. And the surrogate mother is the host. So, in recombinant DNA, you first isolate the target gene, like the gene that codes for insulin, and you need to isolate the suitable vector too. Secondly, you cut both target DNA and vector with the same restriction site. 
After that, you mix the open vector and the fragment of target DNA. And then you add ligase to join them by forming phosphodiester bond. Now that step is known as insertion. Next is transformation. First, you find a capable host and introduce the recombinant DNA into the host. Calcium chloride and heat shock make it more efficient. The next part is screening. You screen the host to find out the one with target gene. In this process, we manipulate the genetic marker that the vector has. Since plasmid and vector has a NPR gene, let's grow our host medium containing ampicillin. This way, the host without any vector will not survive, hence eliminate it. And since we got the vector like exact gene and inserted our target gene in there, we can conclude that the like exact gene will not function anymore. Instead of hydrolyzing at skull, it will produce insulin instead. So let's culture our host in at skull medium as well. The host that hydrolyzes at skull will appear blue. The one that does not hydrolyze at skull will appear white. So, which one will we fill the culture? Yes, correct, it is the white one. This is because the lactate of the vector is non-functioning. It means it expresses another gene instead, which is our target gene. So, that's the host that carries our RDNA. Thank you for listening! You want to know about recombinant DNA technology? I'd be happy to tell you about it. It's simple, you can think of this way. There's this beautiful and rich girl who wanted her own baby. But she don't want to get married and she don't want to get bear the child. And she wanted her baby to have blue colored eyes. So what she could do is she find blue eye collagen from the sperm bank and fuse it with her ovum in vitro. And then she find another woman to carry her child for 9 months. A surrogate mother! After 9 months, the baby with blue color eyes was born. Let us replace the girl with you and you want the insulin or protein. The baby is the insulin. The sperm is the target DNA. The ovum is the vector. And the surrogate mother is the host. So, in the recombinant DNA, you first isolate the target gene like the gene that codes for insulin. And you need to isolate the suitable vector too. Secondly, you cut both target DNA and vector with the same restriction site. After that, you mix the open vector and the fragment of target DNA. And you add ligase to join them by forming phosphodiester bond. The step is known as insertion. Next is transformation. You find a capable host and introduce the recombinant DNA into the host. Calcium chloride and heat shock make it more efficient. Next part is screening. You screen the host to find out the one with target gene. In this process, we manipulate the genetic marker that the vector has. Since plasmid as a vector has a NPR gene, let's grow our host medium containing ampicillin. This way, the host without any vector will not survive, has eliminate. And since we got vectors like that gene and inserted our target gene in there, we can conclude that the Lexac gene will not function anymore. Instead of hydrolyzing Xcal, it will produce insulin instead. So let's culture our host in Xcal medium as well. The host that hydrolyzes Xcal will appear blue. And the one that does not hydrolyze Xcal will appear white. Which one will we further culture? Yes, it's the white one. Because the left side of the vector is non-functioning, it means it expresses another gene instead, which is our target gene. So that's the host that carries our RDNA. Excellent! Well done! 
they have succeeded on forming the gene clone. Remember, all the process of this gene cloning must be handled carefully. And now, I will explain to you the tool we use in gene cloning. First, target DNA, gene of interest. Next, the restriction enzyme that have sticky end and blunt end. Thirdly, DNA cloning vector that have multiple cloning sites. And then, host cell. The most commonly used host organism in the bacterium, Escherichia coli, and yeast cell. Lastly, the DNA ligase. That's the most important crew. So, that's all. Bye! Hmm? You wanna know about recombinant DNA technology? I'll be happy to tell you about it. It is simple. You can think of it this way. There is this beautiful and rich girl who wanted her own baby. But she don't want to get married and she don't want to get near the child. And she want her baby to have blue or colored eyes. So what she could do is she find blue eye collagen from the sperm bank and fuse it with her ovum in vitro. And then she find another woman to carry her child for 9 months. A thousand mother. After 9 months, the baby with blue colored eyes was born. <coughs> Let's replace the girl with you and you want insulin a protein. The baby is the insulin. The sperm is the target DNA. The ovum is the vector. And the surrogate mother is the host. So, in recombinant DNA, you first isolate the target gene like the gene that works for insulin. And you need to isolate the suitable vector too. Secondly, you cut both target DNA and vector with the same restriction site. After that, you mix the open vector and the fragment of target DNA. And you add ligands to join them by forming phosphodiester bond. That step is known as insertion. Next is transformation. You find a capable host and introduce the recombinant DNA into the host. Calcium chloride and heat shock make it more efficient. Next part is screening. You screen the host to find out the one with target gene. In this process, we manipulate the genetic marker that the vector has. Since plasmid as vector has A and J gene, the flow of a host medium containing antihelium. This way, the host without any vector will not survive, hence eliminated. And since we cut vectors like Z gene and insert our target gene in there, we can conclude that the light Z gene will not function anymore. Instead of hydroxine extract, it will produce insulin and stick, so let's culture our host in extract medium as well. The host that hydrolyzes extract will appear blue. The one that does not hydrolyze extract will appear white. Which one we need to the function? Yes, it's the right one. Because the light vector of the vector is non-functioning, it means it expresses another gene instead, which is our target gene. So that is the host that carries our recombinant DNA. Hmm, you want to know about recombinant DNA technology? I'd be happy to tell you about it. It's simple. You can think of it this way. There is this beautiful and rich girl who wanted her own baby. But she don't want to get married and she don't want to get bad a child. And she wanted her baby to have blue colored eye. So what she could do is find blue eye collagen from the sperm bank and fuse it with her ovum in vitro. And then she find another woman to carry her child for 9 months. A surrogate mother. After 9 months, the baby with blue colored eyes was born. Let's replace the girl with you and you want the insulin a protein. The baby is the insulin. The sperm is the target DNA. The ovum is the vector. 
and the surrogate mother is the host. So in recombinant DNA, you first isolate the target gene like gene that codes for insulin. And you need to isolate the suitable vector too. Secondly, you cut both target DNA and vector with the same restriction site. After that, you mix the open vector and the fragment of target DNA. And you add ligase to join them by forming phosphodiester bond. That step is known as insertion. Next is transformation. You find a capable host and introduce the recombinant DNA into the host. Calcium chloride and heat shock make it more efficient. Next part is screening. You screen the host to find out the one with target gene. In this process, we manipulate the genetic marker that vector has. Since plasmin as vector has MPR gene, let's grow our host medium containing ampicillin. This way, the host without any vector will not survive, hence eliminated. And since we cut vectors like Z gene and inserted the target gene in there, we can conclude that the let Z gene will not function anymore. Instead of hydrolyzing x it will produce insulin instead. So let's culture our host in x medium as well. The host with hydrolysis x will appear blue. The one that does not hydrolyze x will appear white. So which one will we further culture? Yes, it's the white wine. <laughs> because the leg zag of the vector is non-functioning, it means it expresses another gene instead, which is our target gene. So that's the host that carries our RDNA. Thank you for watching. Bye. Hmm, you want to know about recombinant DNA technology? I will be happy to tell you about it. It's simple. You can think of it by this way. There is this beautiful a rich girl who wants her own baby, but she don't want to get married and she don't want to get bear the child and she want her baby to have blue color eye. So what she could do is she find blue eye collagen from the sperm bank and fuse it with her ovum in vitro. And then she find another woman to carry her child for 9 months. So that is called a surrogate mother. After 9 months, the baby with blue eye color was born. So now let's replace the girl with you and you want insulin or protein. The baby is the insulin. The sperm is the target DNA, the ovum is the vector, and the secret mother is the host. So, in the combined DNA, you first isolate the target gene, like the gene that code for insulin. And you need to isolate the suitable vector too. Secondly, you cut both target DNA and vector with the same restriction site. After that, you mix the open vector and the fragment of target DNA. And you add ligase to join them by forming phosphodiester bond. The step is known as insertion. The next step is transformation. You find a capable host and introduce the recombinant DNA into the host. Calcium dichloride and heat shock make it more efficient. Next part is screening. You screen the host to find out the one with target gene. In this process, we manipulate the genetic marker that vector has. Since plasmin as vector has ample gene, let's grow our host medium containing ampicillin. By this way, the host without any vector will not survive, hence eliminated. And since we cut vector like Z gene, and insert our target gene in there, we can conclude that the let Z gene will not function anymore. Instead of hydrolyzing x it will produce insulin instead. So let's culture our host in x medium as well. The host that hydrolyzes x will appear with blue and the one that does not hydrolyze x will appear white. So the question is, 
which one we will further culture. Hmm. Yes, it's the white one. Do you know why the white one will be the further culture? The answer is because the lexic of the vector is non-functioning. It means it express another gene instead, which is our target gene. So, that is the host that carries our RDNA. Okay guys, that's all from me. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you guys can learn something new and can understand what I'm saying. Mm, by the way, I hope you guys not forget to like, comment and share this video. Hmm, you want to know about recombinant DNA technology? I'd be happy to tell you about it. It's simple. You can think of it this way. There is this beautiful and rich girl who wanted her own baby, but she don't want to get married and she don't want to bear the child. And she wanted her baby to have blue colored eye. So what she could do is, she find blue eye color gene from the sperm bank and fuse it with her ovum in vitro. And then she find another woman to carry her child for 9 months. A surrogate mother. After 9 months, the baby with blue colored eyes was born. Let's replace the girl with you and you want an insulin, a protein. The baby is the insulin. The sperm is the target DNA. The ovum is the vector. And the surrogate mother is the host. So in recombinant DNA, you first isolate the target gene like the gene that codes for insulin. And you need to isolate the suitable vector too. Secondly, you cut both target DNA and vector with the same restriction site. After that, you mix the opened vector and the fragment of target DNA. And you add ligase to join them together by forming phosphodiester bond. That step is known as insertion. Next is transformation. You find a capable host and introduce the recombinant DNA into the host. Calcium chloride and heat shock make it more efficient. Next part is screening. You screen the host to find out the one with the target gene. In this process, we manipulate the genetic marker that the vector has. Since plasmid as vector has ampicillin resistant gene, let's grow our host medium containing ampicillin. This way, the host without any vector will not survive, hence eliminated. And since we cut vectors like Zac gene and inserted our target gene in there, we can conclude that the like Zac gene will not function anymore. Instead of hydrolyzing Xcal, it will produce insulin instead. So let's culture our host in Xcal medium as well. The host that hydrolyzes Xcal will appear blue. The one that does not hydrolyze Xcal will appear white. Which one will be for the culture? Yes, it's a white one. Because the lag -like of the vector is non-functioning, it means it expresses another gene instead, which is our target gene. So that's the host that carries our RDNA. Hmm, you want to know about recombinant DNA? I'd be happy to tell you about it. It's simple, you can think of it this way. There is this beautiful and rich girl who wanted her own baby, but she don't want to get married and she don't want to get paired a child. And she wanted her baby to have blue colored eyes. So what she could do is she find blue eye collagen from the sperm bank and fuse it with her ovum in vitro. And then she find another woman to carry her child for 9 months. A surrogate mother. After 9 months, the baby with blue colored eyes was born. Let's replace the girl with you and you want the insulin up. The baby is the insulin. 
The sperm is the target DNA. The ovum is the vector. And the surrogate mother is the host. So in recombinant DNA, you first isolate the target gene, like the gene that codes for insulin. And you need to isolate the suitable vector too. Secondly, you can put target DNA and vector with the same restriction site. After that, you mix the open vector and the fragment of target DNA. And you add ligase to join them by forming phosphodiester bond. That step is known as incision. Next is transformation. You find a capable host and introduce the recombinant DNA into the host. CACL2 and heat shock make it more efficient. Next part is screening. You screen the host to find out the one with target gene. In this process, we manipulate the genetic marker that the vector. Since plasmid as vector has ample gene, let's grow our host medium containing ampicillin. This way, the host without any vector will not survive, hence eliminated. And since we cut vector like Z gene and inserted our target gene in there, we can conclude that the light Z gene will not function anymore. Instead of hydrolyzing XTL, it will produce insulin instead. So let's culture our host in XTL medium as well. The host that hydrolyzes XTL will appear blue. The one that does not hydrolyze XTL will appear white. Which one will we further culture? Yes, it's the white one. Because the light Z of the vector is non-functioning, its mean is express another gene instead, which is our target gene. So that's the host that carries our RNA. Okay, guys, that's all for today. Thank you. Hey, guys. I don't understand what the teacher explained really because I was daydreaming. You must be thinking about girls, right? Which part you don't understand? About gene cloning. Oh, that's easy, man. To make it simple, this a rich girl wanted to have a child and also want her child have a brown hair, but she does not want to get married and bear the child. So she went to the sperm then can find a sperm with the brown hair gene then she must find a surrogate mother to carry the child for 9 months hey you forget after get the sperm with the brown hair gene she must fuse it with her ovum in vitro oh i'm sorry after 9 months then the child with the brown hair she wanted is born right that will replace the girl with you and the baby as a protein in this case an insulin the baby is the insulin, the sperm is the target DNA, the ovum is the vector, and the surrogate mother is the host, right? That's right, Miss Anne. The process of gene cloning consists of five steps. The first step is isolation of DNA. In recombinant technology, first you must isolate the target genes, like the genes that code for insulin, and you also must isolate the suitable vector too. Me, me. The second step is cleave or cutting. You must cut both target DNA and vector with the same registration site. Third step is insertion. Mix the open vector and the fragment of the target DNA and you must add the gauge to join them up together by forming phosphodiester bond. The next step is transformation. The recombinant DNA is the introduced to the suitable host. The transferring of recombinant DNA into host cell can be efficiently done using calcium chloride and heat shock method. No, the last step. The last step is screening. The host is screened to find the gene with the target gene. I'm not wrong. In this process, the genetic marker the vector has is manipulated. Since plasmid as vector has ample gene, let's grow our host in a medium containing ampicillin. By doing this, the host with no vector will not survive and will be eliminated. And since we cut the vector of the light Z gene and inserted our gene there, the light Z gene it should not be functioned and instead of it producing x it will produce insulin. The host is then captured inside the x medium.
beside the Excal medium, the host that hydrolyzes Excal will appear blue, while the other that doesn't hydrolyze Excal will be white. The white is will be capturing because because it does not have a functioning like Z. Juice is mean, then it express a different gene, so we will know which is our target gene. Now, do you get it? Yes. Thank you, fans. Hmm, you want to know about recognition in a technology? I'm happy to tell you about it. It's was very simple. Be there is this beautiful rich girl who wanted her own baby. But she don't want to get married and she don't want to get with the child. And she wants